Imagine carrying around a little device that can tell you something critical about your body in just seconds. For millions of people living with diabetes, that device is a glucose meter or glucometer. It's not just a gadget, it's a lifeline, helping them monitor blood sugar levels and manage their health. But have you ever wondered how this tiny marvel actually works? Let's dive in and break it down. Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. To understand how a glucose meter works, it's important to know why it's needed. Glucose is a type of sugar that fuels our cells, giving us the energy to walk, think, and even blink. Insulin, a hormone produced by the pancreas, helps regulate glucose levels in the bloodstream. For people with diabetes, this system doesn't work as it should. A glucose meter allows them to measure their blood sugar levels and make decisions about food, exercise, or medication to stay healthy. Every test begins with a small prick of the finger. The lancet, a spring-loaded needle, makes this part quick and, thankfully, nearly painless. Once a drop of blood is ready, it's placed on a test strip, which is inserted into the meter. That's where the real magic begins. The test strip is a crucial component. It's more than a simple piece of plastic. It's a high-tech marvel. On its surface, there's a thin layer of enzymes, most commonly glucose oxidase or glucose dehydrogenase. These enzymes are essential for the chemical reaction that will reveal your glucose levels. When the drop of blood comes into contact with the enzymes on the test strip, a reaction begins these enzymes interact with the glucose in your blood, breaking it down. In this process, electrons are released. Now, here's where it gets cool. The test strip contains tiny electrodes that pick up these electrons and turn them into an electrical signal. The amount of glucose in the blood determines the strength of this signal. More glucose means more electrons and, consequently, a stronger signal. This signal then travels into the meter, ready to be interpreted. The glucose meter's job is to take that electrical signal and translate it into something meaningful. Your blood sugar level, displayed in millimoles per liter, or milligrams per deciliter, depending on where you live. Inside the meter, a microprocessor analyzes the signal and performs calculations based on the specific characteristics of the test strip and the enzyme used. The entire process, from blood sample to result, takes about 5 to 10 seconds. To ensure accurate readings, glucose meters rely on calibration. Some devices are pre-calibrated, while others require users to enter a code or insert a specific test strip to align the meter with the strip's unique properties. This step ensures that the device interprets the electrical signal correctly. However, no device is perfect. Factors like temperature, humidity, and even how you store your test strips can affect accuracy. That's why most manufacturers recommend using fresh strips and storing them in a cool, dry place. Regularly comparing your glucose meter readings with lab results can also help ensure consistency. Modern glucose meters are the result of decades of innovation. The earliest devices, developed in the 1970s, were bulky and required a lot of blood. They were slow, taking several minutes to provide a reading. Thankfully, technology has come a long way. Today's devices are compact, fast, and require just a tiny drop of blood. We're also seeing the rise of continuous glucose monitoring, CGM systems, which don't require finger pricks at all. These devices use a small sensor inserted under the skin to measure glucose levels in real time, sending data to a smartphone or receiver. While they're not the same as traditional glucose meters, they share similar principles, relying on enzymes and electrical signals to measure glucose. 
One of the most impressive aspects of glucose meters is how they empower people to take control of their health. For those with diabetes, these devices aren't just about numbers. They're about making informed choices. A high reading might signal the need for insulin or a brisk walk, while a low reading could mean it's time for a snack. The emotional aspect of glucose monitoring is also worth mentioning. It's not always easy to face those numbers, especially when they're not what you hoped for. But over time, many people find that their glucose meter becomes less of a daunting device and more of a trusted partner in their health journey. The future of glucose monitoring looks promising. Researchers are working on non-invasive glucose meters that use light, sweat, or even saliva to measure blood sugar levels. Imagine a smartwatch that monitors your glucose without a single finger prick. These innovations could make managing diabetes even more seamless and less intrusive. Artificial intelligence is also playing a role with algorithms that analyze glucose trends and provide personalized recommendations. Pairing this with smart devices could revolutionize diabetes care, turning data into actionable insights. Beyond the technology, glucose meters symbolize the intersection of science, engineering, and human resilience. They're a testament to what's possible when we combine ingenuity with the desire to improve lives. For those managing diabetes, these devices are more than tools. They're a daily reminder of their strength and commitment to health. So, how does a glucose meter work? In essence, it's a blend of biochemistry, electronics, and smart design. From the enzymes on the test strip to the microprocessor in the meter, every component plays a vital role in transforming a tiny drop of blood into life-saving information. For those of us who don't use glucose meters, it's easy to take such technology for granted. But the next time you see one, take a moment to appreciate the complexity behind this small but mighty device. It's a reminder of how far we've come in understanding and managing our health and a glimpse of the exciting innovations still to come. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.